Hello, my name is Dave, and welcome to this two-part tutorial series, where we'll be creating a demonic Halloween scene and applying a rim light to our hero figure. In part one of this tutorial, I'm going to explain how we got to where you see the scene right now in Dao Studio. In part two, we'll be adding a rim light to our hero character, Van Helsing, in order to get her to stand out from the background, thus making the scene more dynamic. I'll also show you a cool trick you can use in your darker scenes. Let's get started on part one and break down our scene and how we got here. I got my original concept by browsing through one of Daz 3D's emails I received from registering. And I saw the Void Lurker figure and I thought to myself, I can make something really cool with him. I'm going to clear my scene real quick and we can get started. All right, now that we have a clear scene, let's start building. I started by looking for an environment to use with the Void Lurker and I narrowed it down to the Secret Ruins environment. I then found a camera angle that I was um, pretty happy with. In this case, it was camera four. I found the mood of the night scene didn't really fit well for what I was going for. So I found an HDRI to apply a new lighting environment. I ended up choosing the Cornfield at Night product and using Cornfield Night 05 for the darker, moody scene I was going for. So it's still pretty dark right now, but that'll come around. To add another layer of spooky vibes, I grabbed the Kinetic Arcana Ground Effects product to add some volumetric low fog to the scene. I played with the shapes and density multipliers to just get the look I was going for. Let's get that fog back in there. So now that I had my environment, I brought in the Void Lurker and placed him in the scene with an intimidating pose as well as using the hidden enemy for Void Lurker texture pack so I can change his skin to be darker and change his eye texture to be yellow. There he is. Looking all kinds of creepy. Since I wanted him to be more intimidating and demonic, I went back to the Kinetic Arcana Ground Effects product and I used the Growing Pit from their provided preset builds. Now that I had a demon, I needed a monster hunter, and who would be better than Van Helsing? I went back to the store and I grabbed the Van Helsing 9 HD Pro Bundle, which gave me 10 products to use, including the figure, hair, outfit, weapons, poses, and more. I placed her in my scene with the items from the Pro Bundle, such as the phrase hair and the full Blood Hunter outfit. I decided I didn't want her to have the two swords on her back due to sight lines, and I removed the hat too, just to follow the vibe we had going on. I then added a sword in her right hand with a right hand sword wearable, because she had to be armed to fight the Void Lurker. I then put her into a running action pose toward the demon to give the scene some more movement. But something's still missing. I found that just a single Void Lurker would be no match for Van Helsing. So I gave him a helping hand and added a second right down there. With the environment and figures now in the scene, I wanted to change the camera angle and make the viewer feel like they're in the action with Van Helsing. That's better. Now to start adding some of the other details, such as lighting. First, we need to give it some backlighting. Because right now, when we first look at our scene, it's still going to be very dark with just the glow from the pit coming out and the moonlight. So to add a bit more detail, we're going to add some backlighting. This backlighting lets you see a bit more of the details, add some depth to that fog. And for that, I use Eye Radiance HDR Mesh Lights Volume 2 for Eye Ray. I place that light behind Van Helsing to the right and up in order to mimic the moon like, and I change the emission color to a dark blue. So with backlighting done, I thought I should add some volumetric fire effects. For those, I grabbed Pyromantic's Volumetric Flames. I used a couple of these props and placed them in the scene to highlight the demons and add some depth to the image, as well as help direct the viewer's eye. There we go. The last thing I needed to add, some sky effects, because the top of the image just seemed out of place, and I liked the idea of the fires being widespread and thus lighting up the clouds in the sky. For that, I used Storm Cloud A from VDB Sky, 
and I change the emission color of the lightning to be orange in order to give that look of a fire reflection. Awesome. Now that we have everything in place, there's a lot going on that my computer is trying to keep up with and calculate. So I take pity on my poor little PC and I use the camera view optimizer. This handy tool lets you select the camera you're using. In this instance, it's just labeled camera. And it will remove everything from the scene that the camera can't see. This will drastically lighten the load on your machine and what it has to process. Thank you very much for watching part one. And I really hope you enjoy me for part two.